A blessed evening to all of you who are here and those also fellow worshippers in other parts of the world. I would like to continue this uh, meditation on this uh, letter of Paul to Timothy. Maybe can reveal, can give us lessons that are uh, relevant also for our uh, experiences as church because this letter is addressed to a leader of a particular community. They say that Timothy was a bishop or what they call an overseer of a community, Christian community. And if yesterday the uh, main focus of the reflection or teaching of Paul was on the importance of praying for uh, the authorities. Now it is focused more on the authorities of the church or the Christian community called episcopos or bishops. And uh, here we find Paul enumerating in detail the qualities of those responsible for a Christian community, that they must have these qualities as they carry out their duties you know, as administrators and charge to serve them, to serve the community. And Paul speaks here of those who aspire for to, to be uh, a bishop, an overseer, as something worthy of praise since uh, it means availability towards the community. And we know very well that uh, leadership roles are difficult ones, yet these are also necessary for the functioning of whatever group, so also with the church. The title bishop in the early church still appears as a synonym to what they call later on as the presbyter or priest or elder in uh, its uh, literal translation. The bishop priests are not only administrators of temporal matters, but also in charge in a special way of teaching and government. And everything that is required of them as administrators are the same things, same qualities that is expected, that are expected also from ordinary Christians, even from uh, a simple Christian. No. The same qualities, like for example, married, irreproachable married life, sobriety, education, hospitality, virtues to a respectable public person. The ability to, to teach is also necessary to perform such position. It is required that the bishop not to be recently converted so that he does not fall into the temptation of pride. Remember that uh, many of the members at that time were converts and one of the provisions there that uh, a bishop, chosen bishop, must not be recently converted. It is also required that the candidate must enjoy good reputation among outsiders that is, among the non-Christians. 
this will be for the good of the church since Christians live among the Gentiles who judge Christians by what is being manifested externally. Therefore, reprehensible behavior of Christians would give outsiders the right to reject the Christian message naturally. So with the other ministers like the deacons, no? other category of uh, minister in the early church, in fact in the uh, original uh, text, it speaks also of deaconesses, women, it's, in English it just uh, translated it as women, but actually in the uh, original text, it refers to deaconess, who also perform uh, important roles in the community like instruction, assisting the women in baptism, for example, and as ministers of the church. So we see here the varied ministries that would emerge in the early church and they continue today. And thanks to these ministries that the church becomes more vibrant and the needs of the church are given attention to not only the, the bishop, priest, but also of other types of ministries. In fact, we see, and this is uh, also the challenge for all of us, that as Christians we have our own ministries or gifts that we can give for the uh, enrichment of the church. And we are reminded again here that with uh, our calling as baptized Christians, God has endowed us with so much gifts. And may we use them to enrich our communities, our church. You know, for the last three years, almost three years, we have been meditating, we have been working, reflecting on this message, this initiative of the Pope on synod synodality, meaning at the core of this is the concern of the Pope for a wider, more active participation of all baptized that we can truly enrich the Church of Christ by our own active participation according to the gifts God has given us. Soon, next month, I think, we'll have, there will be the uh, synod in, uh, in Rome, the gathering of bishops, bringing with them the resolutions, the experiences, insights, from the whole world from, you know, and hopefully would help us put into practice you know, this journeying together as a church. So let our prayer, especially during these days, be for the success of this uh, synod in Rome, the gathering of bishops, because and with the hope that it will help us also uh, and the whole church in its growth towards more faithful following of the Lord Jesus. May our encounter once again with him, with the risen Lord in this Eucharist, Help us grow in our love, 
concern for his church, our church. Amen.